In July of 2008, uh, Lilly announced to the employees at the Tippecanoe Laboratories and also to the, to the broader Lafayette community that we were looking strategically at the Tippecanoe Laboratories and there were three options that were outlined. One would be to cease operations and completely shut the plant down. A second would be to retain ownership within Lilly but scale it back because of the sort of the change in, in the mission and the composition of our pipeline. And the third was to sell it to somebody else who might be able to continue the product lines and even expand new product lines for other customers. And that's what we're here to announce today, which we think is a great outcome for our employees. We think this is a great outcome for the greater Lafayette community, and we think it's a great outcome for Lilly. Um, why was Lilly looking at changing um, what was going on in that facility? Was it because your direction had changed? Was it not as productive as you'd like it to be? No, it was a very productive plant and has been uh, a facility for Lilly that's really been um, a real gem in the Lafayette community and, and an important part of Lilly over the years, for 55 years actually. But uh, the nature of its mission and of, of the composition of Lilly's pipeline had changed. More of a focus on biologic drugs within Lilly's pipeline, which means a little less of a focus on what is done and what's manufactured at the typical new laboratories. And uh, just sort of, uh, Lilly is constantly, we're constantly examining our capacity uh, across the world for manufacturing and trying to make sure we have things right and that we're not uh, underutilizing facilities. And we believe that we were underutilizing this facility going forward. What is uh, currently because, manufactured there? Well, several, uh, several either, either components of or finished product, uh, bulk product, of several of our pharmaceuticals. For example, Gemzar, a cancer medicine, is produced there and other what are called small molecule or chemically synthesized uh, products. And so why we is are, that plan underutilized then? Well, we, are, we also were looking forward to the fact that some of the products that are produced there, the patents will expire on those products in, in the relatively near future. So they'll need to um, uh, produce other products, and we felt that that Sometimes you have to look at a plant and say, who's the best owner of this? And somebody who could not only supply Lilly, and there, there'll be a nine-year supply agreement here uh, between Ivonic and Lilly. So somebody who could not only supply Lilly with the product that we're going to continue to need um, in, to a substantial degree for many years to come, uh, but also uh, develop new product lines and develop new customers and really grow, uh, at least have the opportunity to grow that facility and uh, make it an even more productive facility under their ownership. So it made sense for Avonic, it made sense for Lilly, and I think it's a great outcome for Lilly employees because every single one of the full-time Lilly employees at the site will be offered a job with Avonic, and they'll also receive a, a you know, a a package from Lilly because Lilly's uh, ownership will be ending there uh, by the end of the year. And so it's a really, it's a, it's a, a terrific outcome for them, a uh, very good outcome for the greater Lafayette area because that plant will continue uh, to operate and uh, potentially in the future even grow. And for the state of Indiana, it retains jobs. And for Lilly, it's a, it's a good outcome for us as well. Um, 700 jobs there and all of them will remain? Uh, all of them who choose to remain, all 700 will be offered, all 700 full-time Lilly employees at the Tippecanoe Laboratories will be offered uh, employment with Ivonic. Um, so it's not a matter of having the opportunity to interview for employment. They'll be offered employment. Yes, they will. Correct. Um, and, and you said there's also the possibility of expansion as well? Well, that's up to Ivonic, but, uh, and I'll let, I'll let uh, Ivonic speak for itself on this, but certainly the opportunity, Lilly was very unlikely to use that plant to, to grow further, um, but Ivonic will have that opportunity, and, and I think that they'd certainly like to do that. Obviously, it depends on what business they're able to obtain, uh, but I think the, the prospects for the typical new laboratories going forward are very bright. And there is also the feature of a collaborative relationship between Ivonic and Lilly, if you could speak right. to that. We have a, uh, a multi-year supply agreement with Ivonic as part of this deal. So that plant will continue producing uh, products for Lilly uh, for several years to come. Um, and you said that the products they were producing, the patents were about to expire on those. On products. some, yes, on some of them, not, not on all of them. So they produce, they produce um, chemi chemicals that are, sorry, let me start over. Sure. <laughs> they produce chemicals that are components 
of pharmaceuticals, of, of medicines. They propose or they uh, uh, provide and manufacture some finished product in bulk, not not uh, in injectables or in pills, but in bulk, which is then turned into injectable medicines or pills. And so they produce a variety of things, and then some other chemicals that are used uh, throughout Lily's processes. And so that that will continue. Gotcha. Um, so I, I'm sorry. Let me just make clear. Sure. Some, you know, the composition of what they produce for Lily might change a little bit over time. For example, when the patent on Gemzar expires, but uh, they'll continue producing products for Lily for many years. Um, let's talk about the sale itself. Sure. Um, do we have? Uh, prices here? What was the... No, we're not disclosing any of the financial terms of the deal. Gotcha. Can you tell me whether the deal was financially advantageous for Lilly? Is this something you're smiling about today? Well, you know, we announced uh, on September 14th that we are going to be reducing the number of employees in Lilly worldwide by 5,500. We are going to be reducing our expenditures uh, by a uh, billion dollars over the next couple of years. And this is all part of that. So this is a, this is a deal that, uh, this is a transaction I think is very advantageous both for Lilly and for Avonic. It, it works effectively for both companies. So um, you expect a, a positive stock market reaction to this? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll never predict a stock market <laughs> reaction. I'll simply... <laughs> I'll simply say this is a this is a good transaction both for Lilly's long term future uh, and also for Avonic and it brings a new corporate citizen uh, to the state of Indiana which we think is very important as well. No, there's no doubt that certainly the Lafayette community um, uh, very dependent on Lilly and that plant. Um, it's made a significant contribution it has, to yes. their uh, economic health. So this secures the. Or, or, or at least it, it, it does. Those jobs. It, it does secure those jobs, and I think that's really critical. The, you know, there are different ways we could have done this, and as I told you, one of them would have been to really scale the plant down and retain ownership. Another would have been to close the plant entirely. I think of the three options. This is clearly the one that's best for the employees and best for the Lafayette community and, and best for the state of Indiana. So, I think it's a it's a win 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 all the way.